Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wild at Heart Show, a show for men, by men, about men, at USA Global TV and radio. My name is Roland, Roland Friedel. I'm originally from Austria, a small little country in the middle of Europe, and I'm the creator and host of this uh, men show here in USA Global TV and radio. For my background um, con- uh, regarding to USA Global TV, I'm, I'm co-hosting together with Dr. Jacqueline, the CEO and founder uh, of the show. I co-host them um, the, every Tuesday, by the way. I co-host the Mallorca Connection with very, very interesting uh, guests, interview guests from all over the world, from different parts of the world, different topics. I do that. I'm a talking head, meaning I have my own business show on Tuesday for people who are interested in business related topics. And on Wednesdays, I just two hours ago, I had uh, the amazing Earth show, an environmental show I'm hosting. And now it's time again on a man show, Wild at Heart, Real, Authentic, Uncut. Meaning, if you're the first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. We already have episode 25. Time is flying away, so we have to celebrate a little bit. Uh, it's almost the 25th already episode of the Earth Show. For those gentlemen who were the first time here or didn't see all, please go on our website. It's bonfiredogs.com. There you will see all recordings. There are all recordings available of all the other shows, also the announcement of the future shows. But you also will see the contact details of all the panelists, meaning I'm not doing alone this show. I have some guys with me from different parts of the world and different backgrounds. Actually, today we are four. Two guys uh, have a day off. We are four today except of sex and of six. Not sex. Oh, man. Yeah, it's six. And sorry for that. And yes, the topic today is how to create a home your loved ones will love. And I think it's also an interesting topic for men of what we can do that our loved ones, our family feels comfortable and safe and good. But first of all, before we started, let's welcome our panelists today. I would love to start with my dear friend from Egypt, from the Middle East, Mohamed Monia. Welcome, Mohamed. Hello, Roland. How are you, sir? We um, really, I missed the show last week, so I'm here back. So enthusiastic about this one, excited. I good to have you here, Monia. And the good news is this: this topic today is not bothering our wives. It's a good one, <laughs> anyway. Good to have you back, my dear friend. Yeah, let's welcome from the UK. Big Scott is also back. Yo, 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 yo. How are you doing? Yeah, 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 yo. Hey, Big Scott, how you doing? Yeah, we're all good. Yeah, I wasn't here last week because I had um, some bad news of a friend passing. So it's been a bit of a crazy week. So, uh, yeah, um, it's a shame. We'll have to re- revisit that topic at a later date, I think. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be back and talking about tonight's topic. So, Thank you. Thank you for your time and energy. Yeah, last but not least, also from the Middle East, from Egypt, our dear friend, Hassan. Hassan. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hi, Hassan. Hi. How are you doing? All is good. All is good. That's good yeah. news. Okay, gentlemen. So we have a topic about how to create a home your loved ones will love. And you know, when I remember when I was in my twenties, uh, I had a mentor, and he told me, you know, one day you have to, uh, yeah, start a family, settle down, build a house, plant a tree, have a dog. So all this is done. Uh, and, and one of the things is uh, creating a home where your loved ones feel with love, meaning they feel safe, they feel comfortable, it is cozy. Uh, 
guys, what have you done so far, or what did you learn, or what was your was what, what your was what your goal to to create a home for your family? Whoever wants to jump in. Well, for me, it's quite easy. I, I live by myself, so <laughs> my house, it's easy to it's easy to love him. But um, I know what you mean. But uh, the, the comfort comes from a good, healthy relationship. And there's simple little things that men can do that I've learned over the years. You know, putting the toilet seat down is a, is a big one. <laughs> for us yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you can, little things like that, you know, shutting a door, turning off lights. Uh, but I think that's more of a man thing. You know, I go around, you know, if I'm not using a room, I keep the lights off where women tend to keep the lights on just in case the ghosts get scared. Do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah. um, little things like that, little reciprocal things. Um a loving home, as I say, it, it starts and ends with a good relationship and knowing that you, you, you're happy to share things. You know, there's it, there's not there's material things that are irrelevant, you know, but um, a happy home is a, is a comfortable home where everybody feels comfortable to talk to each other and the furnishings are just a bonus. Yeah. Well, I, I always say it, uh, what I learned is a man provides a home, a woman makes it a home. So meaning we, we can build a house, we can pay everything, but the, the wife makes it a home. Uh, my dear friend Monir, how about you? Monir, you're muted. My apologies, yes. Um, so, uh, of course, I mean, it's... Uh, it's um, uh, how can I start this? It was always uh, this kind of uh, things that I've heard from the family and so on, stating always about, you know, how are you going to be building the home? And um, building the home is not only doing the bricks and uh, and uh, having a physical location where you stand, but it was, uh, it was always this kind of, uh, you know, um, um, responsibility of being able to manage and build this kind of, uh, um, of uh, you know a place that we called home, where love and and tender and safety and um, those kind of things to to be um, uh, reached there. So so this is how uh, it was all started, you know, and, and it was really I've done I've done several ones because I started with um, uh, my first home was my first wife, and then. Another one when I lived three uh, uh, years uh, alone um, um, uh, after my divorce, and now I am. This is now like uh, almost four years now with with my second wife. So it is quite an experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And and what you said, uh, Monia, I can absolutely relate to it. I mean, uh, creating a home doesn't just mean building a house or renting a house or an apartment. It's just more. Yeah, it's just more than the physical bond. It's just the the bricks and the wall. It's just how we behave, uh, how what we offer there, how we communicate there, how we give space to others, how we respect others. Like that. Uh, like you you said, Scott, I, I'm a happy single too. Uh, but I was also married twice. Uh, first and first marriage with three kids and the second one without kids but kids from my wife and um yeah it's 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 more what I learned you know you know I, I had a very conservative education you know just the man is the the protector and the provider meaning provider pays for everything and the the women takes care about the family or um, the sort of food is on the table stuff like that but this changed many many years ago so I learned it's more than just yeah, building a house or buying a house or renting a flat or whatever. It's just more than a man can do that the family feels safe and good. And what I what I did, what I really love to do is uh when I remember in my, my first marriage when the kids were small, it's first of all respecting their space. So all of the kids had their own room and yeah, respecting their space. And uh, even when I went in, just knocking on the door and 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 asking for permission to get in. It's it's one of the things respecting them. The other thing is uh, giving, when, when it's possible, giving your wife her own space where she can hide, have a hideaway <laughs> when she needs her space and time out <laughs> within the house. But it's it's also that I get more and more engaged in homework. So I love to cook. I started, well, I always love to cook. So I, I did a lot of cooking. I did a lot of cleaning. 
Uh, to be honest, the only thing I never did is ironing, but I do washing. I'm, I'm uh, go go uh, buying food, providing food, cooking. So I love to contribute on that because I think it's also important. Even when you have a busy day, or when I mean you're a busy businessman like I have been and still am, I, I still love this to do. What do you think is homework? Doing work at home, homework. I mean, not work working remotely. I mean, <laughs> washing dishes, cooking, cleaning, iron, ironing, or whatever. Is this part of your of what are you doing, Hassan? We don't cook. We don't clean. <laughs> <laughs> Here in the Middle East, you don't do anything. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yes, actually, I don't know if it's a, it's a it's a bad culture. It's not a good culture or a healthy one uh, that uh, you clean and you you, you uh, take care of the of uh, the dishes. And I, I don't know. This is not good. I know. But uh, if you do something like this, it will be extra. Uh, which is, uh, I know it's difficult for you guys to to understand. And uh, even though uh, the the getting back to the furniture and the house here uh, in uh, Egypt and uh, even in in the country or uh, countryside or in the capital here in Cairo, uh, the man uh, has to buy the house. Uh, the logic of renting a house to get married is not uh, even. Uh, uh an idea okay maybe it's trying to, to be changed now but uh, it's a headache uh, to uh, get a house to pay uh, for a house it's too much money to very costly and uh, to get uh, uh, a gift and a gift uh, with lots of money like jewelry or something like this and also to get uh, the uh, part of the furniture and the part of the uh, electricity, like uh, all the the equipment, so it's a it's a big investment. And uh, actually, no one uh, now or, or or most of the people cannot afford it. So the marriage rate is very low. Uh, and beside this, you have to make a, a big party and pay amount of money to to, to the one you're gonna you're gonna marry. Uh, lots of investment, uh, but uh, at the end, the, whatever this will happen, I, at the end, this, as you said, it will not create a home uh, because uh, a home needs to, yani, it needs warm feelings and uh, mutual respect, uh, like Dick Scott had said from the beginning, and uh, love uh, and, and taking care of the small and tiny details. Uh, and if you have a family like kids uh, going to their bed, checking that they're sleeping or not. Uh, actually, I, I, I miss this as well because uh, I'm in the second marriage now and my daughters uh, are growing. And uh, I, a long time ago, I didn't have this uh, feeling that to, to uh, watch them uh, while sleeping. Uh, but, but now, even though... They come to the weekend and stay with me, but I can see it's enough, of course. And the second marriage, uh, now I can see it's a little bit... Uh, 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 the, the, my, my wife, uh, she takes care of the details, like getting, uh, for example, uh, indoor plants and uh, pictures. She wants to put pictures of me and her in the house, small details like uh, flowers, uh, arrangements every now and then in the furniture. She, she wants to, to make the house more cozy and warm as possible. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's called fe feather in the nest. Yeah. <laughs> feather in the nest. Feather in the nest. Yeah. yeah, like, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hassan, Hassan, yeah. did I understand you properly? When you want to get engaged and married in in your country, you have to buy. You have to afford a house first. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh! And, for, and a load of money to give to her as well. So he's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the spending is the beginning. It's a little bit different here in Europe. In Europe, you can start with, with, with without nothing, with nothing. You build up yeah. something, but this, then the spending is in the divorcement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, here it's the opposite. 
Okay, the spending is uh, okay. Well, well, you know exactly the beginning. We were okay, okay. okay All the spending I, I in the beginning and yeah. after divorce. Uh, not that you got much. nothing yet. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you have it all you already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've already, yeah. And you said you're not cooking and cleaning, meaning that you most of the families have stuff to dust this, or what do you mean by this? Yeah. Yes, uh, there's a maid or uh, outside cleaning uh, person uh, who comes to clean or something. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I mean, we had, we, we, had, we had a cleaning lady too, once a week, but rest of the week I was doing it because with the dogs and the cats, we had a lot of hair around. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. But got it, got strange, it. Right. Yeah? yeah. But like what we've all sort of hit upon, it's being there as part of the family, but also you need your time. Like Roland, you were saying, you know, the wife needs a room or a place to go to. And, you know, there's eight hours, uh, 24 hours in a day. So it should be eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, and eight hours of play in the real world. You know what I mean? So if everybody's balanced and happy and they've got their own little solace then i think that's what makes a happy home and pictures and stuff if you're with people long enough you know my flat even though i live by myself i feathered my nest and it's mainly images and memories of what i carry along the years because i in the younger days you know i was in the forces i was a forces child so i moved 13 times you know so you learn to be bare minimal you know, when you were moving all the time, because it cost you to ship stuff in and out. So mm -hmm. I think that you're long, the longer you're together as a family, the more it becomes homely, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But I remember when in my first marriage, my dad, yeah, when, I, when I look back to the living conditions, I was paying everything, of course, but uh, the style was a little bit chaotic of everything. When I we had three kids, it looks a little chaotic. And my second marriage, the house was very empty, so very clear architecture, modern stuff. To be honest, I didn't feel comfortable at all. For me, it was too cool. Yeah, yeah too cool and too cold. I didn't feel comfortable at all. And then afterwards, with my with my with my girlfriends, the last five years, she brought in more. Yeah, more flowers, pictures. It had more warmth, and we did. And then all everything changed. You know, we had our cleaning lady. Not yeah, not every week. Every second week, we did more. We did cook. We did more cooking. We went less outside for for lunch and dinner. We did more cooking at home. We also did more preserving stuff. You know, making our own jam, making our own fruits, stuff like from from the gardens. So it, it changed. It changed totally. Uh, children, when we when they talk about creating a home, so we came across it's just more than buying a house or renting something. It's creating a home is 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 much more. Uh, I mean, we have more and more single parents. Um, what do you think is is a home really important? Or because what I see as a trend is there are less people. Uh, who say this is my home? They say, okay, like, like you said, Scott. A lot of people are moving around for a job or whatever yeah, reason. Yeah. yeah, they're living here, they're living there. Most of the time, uh, I know a lot of people who are buying or even renting furnished homes. Yeah, they don't yeah, want to yeah, buy yeah. any furniture because they, they stay maybe three months or half a year or a year and then move on. So, what? what it's what's too the hard future? These days. The too yeah. hard to, these days, you know, a, a home from when I was a youngster was a family home where you all did your stuff. Teenagers, you know, used to do a paper round or whatever. You all paid into the house. And every Sunday we all sat around the table and you had a meal together. Every evening we'd sit down and have a meal. And it wasn't just the eating, you know, it was the, the help and prepare stuff. And then sitting down and having a conversation, you know, you've eaten the food, the wine comes out, a bit of cheese, and it's that that's where life issues were dealt with. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now it's too expensive to buy a house, and it's the similar to sort of thing what you were just saying, Hassan, in Egypt, you know, uh, the marriage rate is going down because people can't afford houses, you know, families can't afford to live together in the UK. Sometimes, believe it or not, it's actually more cost effective for people to live apart mm. you know mm. what i mean because it's it's a sad state of affairs but that's the world that we're living in there's more and more bloody rat cages being built i.e flats and apartments than we really really need you know all the big homes and you know another thing was the home you walk in the house and you could smell the bread you know mum has been cooking during the day uh, that was the 
the things that you missed, but they were the things that you got like, oh yeah, I'm home now. Yeah, yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? so, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. this when 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 I went through our apartment house. You know, you really when I was was a, was a kid and visiting my friends. You really you could you could you knew what it's cooked because you could smell it. Mm -hmm. Now they just bring some I don't know some prepared stuff in the microwave and you don't smell anything. Yeah. Now you, you just order it in. You know, yeah. you just order it in. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. But is a home still a home? I mean, I, I give an example. I uh, Two weeks ago, when I was a, a little bit no, more north in Spain, I was visiting a very good friend. He's the CEO of a huge company, Spanish guy, and we drove with his convertible through an amazing valley. And there was astonishing villas, you know, a lot of Russian people, a lot of businessmen, really tremendous villas, huge houses, very cool architecture. And... And his house is more warm one, more an Ibison style, more Finca style, like my home was in Mallorca. And yet, Roland, what do you think about this, uh, this incredible houses? And I said, Juanco, for me, it is they're cool, they're yeah, cold, no. and, they're they're not, that's, and, and, yes. and they're empty like the guys who are living in. Yeah. They're cool, cold, and empty like the people who can afford it. There's no living. Well, that's There's just no, a show. That's no. a show thing, isn't it? Really, yeah. that's not a home. That's just a oh, look at what I can afford. I was watching yeah. a documentary yesterday, and this billionaire just invested 168 million in making a mansion in the centre of London. And I was like, why? Do you know what I mean? You've got 20, 30 apartments elsewhere. I'm sure there's yeah. If you've got that money, spend it. But that's not a home. That's people just showing. You know, get the best designer of the world in. That's not homely because mainly yeah. a lot of it's glass. It might have a most amazing view, but it's like being sat in a bloody greenhouse. You know, so. <laughs> we we see this uh, we see this a lot in in in, in Egypt as well when uh, in the Middle East when most of the home is done just for you know outsiders and they never come. Uh, so so this is the idea is that they make a salon or a, a place where it's for guests and another and then they live in one or two rooms only and and that does not have anything to do with a warm house or a home where we are living together as a family that's it's soulless nonsense yeah. yeah yeah i mean right now gentlemen you know i'm, I'm living since uh six and a half months i'm living in my motorhome i moved from a huge huge house with a lot of land from mallorca to my, my motorhome and 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 for me it's a home it's a cozy home i feel comfortable mm -hmm. i love it i love it yes uh, and, i love it it's, uh, it's not maybe... about size no. Yes, not it's not about size at all. Let let me share my personal experience as well, because because there was this time, you know, I was uh, um, you know building this uh, uh, home or house, where it's a, it's a, it's a, a big one, uh, uh, having uh, you know a pool, place for dogs, and um, a roof and everything, garden everything. And, and that was really, um, you know, the, the, the dream home that I always have. Uh, it was, uh, it was um, mainly related with how can I, uh, you know, thinking that once I've spent and invested this kind of money, I would definitely uh, be having it all. And uh, wanted to have the pool for the kids and everything, you know. Uh, let me just let you know that it's. Um, I was always thinking of you know getting back from a long day at um, at the office and then jump to the pool with the kids and so on. I lived in that home for ten years. I only went to the pool twice, and I was always dreaming before that that I would uh, you know in the garden I would lie down having my dogs um, just around me and I would be reading some books. Uh, lying on the grass. Uh, on the grass, I did this one time in ten years. So it was always working, 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 and I just all what I've uh, you know um, had to use in that home is just this small corner at the sofa, and even the office. Uh, I made um, a, a home office at that at that uh, uh, house. And it was all full of my certificates and so on. I was not really able to work from there. So I was always on the flight. I was always there. I did not uh, enjoy the dogs or the pool or anything. So and and then after that, I had to leave the home and I was just uh, you know renting small apartment. 
and and in that small apartment, um, it although I did not love it, I did not like it. I was saying this is not my home. I don't want to move out. I don't want to do this. I need to be with my kids and so on. And um, but at um, at that point of time, I had no choice. But all what I'm saying is that suddenly I found myself able to read in like um, five meters uh, balcony. And I was having all the reading that I wanted to do. I did not have dogs at that small apartment, but I was enjoying everything in it. And I was, um, uh, you know, unlike Hazim and unlike a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, Arabs or Middle Easterns, I cook, I uh, um, um, uh, I clean, I you know I uh, uh, I support uh, the wife, uh, washing dishes and doing some uh, some of the household things. So it was at that point of time I felt how much um, and how warm it is to have a home, even if I, if I'm living in there alone, or. Uh, um, not a house big with servants, drivers, pool, garden, and so on, and you don't feel anything of it. Yeah, I, I can absolutely relate to this, um, Munir. Uh, absolutely understand you and uh, what you're saying. And I had this years ago when when I moved to Mallorca before I went to the Finca. I had this absolute extreme luxury penthouse because my wife wanted it. She she wanted it, you know, with this puristic style class. And, and stuff like huge, amazing sea view, but very, very simple. You know, my simple meaning in the furniture, you know, very structured, you know, all the stylish, uh, trendy, modern furniture. I, don't, I didn't like it. It looked cool. Everyone who came in and said, looks cool, but I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And you know what? what? I didn't like my the neighborhood. I didn't like the other people <laughs> who felt comf comfortable in in their homes. I, I didn't like it, and I moved out after uh, six and a half years. But when you when you're telling about your pool, you know, I had a huge terrace on on this uh, rooftop terrace on 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 this penthouse, huge one, and a jacuzzi there with an amazing view. And I was also only four in six and a half years. I was I guess three or four times I, I was in the jacuzzi, and I will never forget it. I guess it was a training that we delivered in in in, in Dubai. When we delivered in Dubai in July, do you remember, Monia? Yes. I was calling. I was I was calling home, and my wife didn't pick up her mobile, so I was calling up the the, the other line. And it took a long time until the the, the mate, um, who was the cleaning lady, picked up the phone, and and I I heard some bubbling in the background, and I said, "What's that? This noise." Is there a broken tube? I said, oh, no, Mr. Frill, I'm sitting in your, I'm trying your jacuzzi. And I said, bloody fuck, sorry. I fly, I work like crazy, and my cleaning lady is sitting in my jacuzzi enjoying the view, and I don't even have the time because I'm not at home. And this gave me a lesson. This gave a, So I was loving when you said, Monia, you only have been two times or one time in your pool. Uh, same happened to me. So sometimes we have a dream. And we believe when we when we have this, when we reach this goal, then we're happy and everything is okay. But at the end of the day, it's not. It's not. Absolutely. But that's the ironic thing, isn't it? You have a place like that, whether it's a small home or a big home, you spend most of your time working to be able to pay the bills to live in that mm. home, but you don't have the time to enjoy living in that home. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Yes. Uh, and ironically, uh, ironically, Big Scott, is that when I was thinking about it and I and I uh, I, I was talking to one of my relatives who um, uh, who's an architect, and um, and I was young at that point. I think it was like I was 24, 25 when I was saying, you know, that I'm going to be doing this. And then after that, when I started to coming to realization about it and I was going to buy it and so on, I was 32 at that point of time. And it was big uh, investments. So you, you know how it is. I mean, in the middle of that. And this like was more than what I'm earning. Um, uh, uh, so um, and he warned me, he said, you know, it's not. Uh, is not the things will will make you happy or make you feel that this is home or something. You know, it, it's uh, be cautious. And I listened and so on. And he was giving me some true story about uh, his friends where they did their dream house, but they were not able to go to live there because yeah. they were so busy because they couldn't go to that because it was far away from the city. 
So yeah. they did it. Or oh, while they're there, they're still doing it. the work anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I was just saying, all right, yeah, but I would be cautious. I would definitely make sure that I would not, not fall into that. And, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, ironically, I did, I did the same. Um, and, and we don't believe it when we are young. It needs yeah, some yeah. wisdom to be able to understand how it is. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have a question. Do you believe guys in uh, uh, a positive energy homes? Because as Munir said, uh, maybe it's a big house, but I cannot feel it, and I cannot feel being belong the belonging to this house. Mm. Uh, does this has to do with the with the, the colors, for example, or the uh, furniture, or uh, designing uh, the home at the beginning? Did you ever experience to 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 put your hands into this at the beginning, and then? you test if this home is uh, is is quite uh, positive energy or, or 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 it's negative i don't like it yeah. no, just for me it just feels cold and isolated yeah we, we we've all only got so much live love to love to give so if there's a husband and wife and two children if they live in a two or three bedroom house there's enough love and warmth to fill that house maybe ooze out of that house but if you put them five people into a 500 square foot greenhouse it's hard to feel that you know it's, it's too to me it's too expansive you can't get to love it has to to me it's more close and intimate uh is love for me if it's too wide and too open it's more uh sort of hedonistic do you know what i mean it's to me it's not more ro my my romanticism of you know, a loving house is a nice fire, open fire, sat around there, as you say, reading a book or having a little room, little garage or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I would never, never in my lifetime feel comfortable in a house of that size. A, because it was going to cost you a bloody fortune to heat it and <laughs> the bills. Do you know what I mean? So I'd have to work my ass off just to pay the bills. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, I always had huge houses. I mean, but uh, to answer your question, Hazem, I, I was always renting. I'm a renter. I'm not a buyer because, Same you know, here. guys, I always want to be flexible because when I want to move, I want to give back the key, I'm not worrying about selling and I move forward. I was always renting. I spent a hell Same of money here. on rents. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I want to be flexible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to, to come back to your question, Hazem, yes, I can feel the energy, and especially all my, my, my wife and my, later my girlfriend, yes, we do this. We feel the energy and we say, no, there's not a good energy for any reason. Yeah, we do this. Uh, we're also looking into when we do furnishing and looking at how how, how the energy is. And actually, the, the last house, this huge thing I was in, uh, it, had, it had a very bad energy because it was hundreds of years old, hundreds of years old. So there happened some bad stuff there, really bad stuff there. See, and I'd when like we that. did... <laughs> I'd and, love that, yeah. <laughs> And we did some, uh, actually my girlfriend, she's a shaman, she, we did some ceremonies, we did some smoking, you know, get a smoke, get, get the energy out of the house. And afterwards, it was really much better, really much better. And what I can, from, from a personal perspective, what I could also feel is I cannot sleep good in a bed when there is some, I don't call the English word, when there's some water running through or there's something, I don't know how you call this. Um, in German, we say when there's a Wasser out of, when there's some, Water, water around feature, water feature yeah yeah for the feature yeah, yeah I, I can feel this and and what we, what we always do is um when i look at a house or, or a penthouse whatever it is of our house or a penthouse when we rent something i always look about the of course how the sun is going because sun is very important for me and and i always have a look at the dormitory uh how we put the bed because we always have the head in the north always so if it's not working because there's a there is a window in the way or something you cannot put the bed here we, we we don't move in so we always have the head in the north and by the way i'm always lying on the right side but now i'm a single <laughs> and i put my caravan out of way like my so my head is always in the north but anyway yeah i, I strongly believe has in 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 in, especially when you move into a house that somebody else lived has lived in before, you, you you get the energy absolutely. The energy is very important. Yeah, but that's but why. All, yeah, sorry. That, that's why a woman makes it a home because when they start putting those little bits and bobs in, the energy changes and it creates the energy that she wants for her her, her clutch. You know, her family. You know, as you said, we 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 provide the bricks and mortar. 
predominantly it's the partner that uh, makes it a home you know yeah so. yeah and i remember when i came together with my second wife uh we also removed her bed double bed we also removed my double bed we bought a new one together to bring a new energy in the dormitory oh yeah that's yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. As long as they weren't bunk beds. <laughs> Maybe changing the wallpaper as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and guys, I think uh, it is, yeah. Sorry, yeah, go I, ahead, Ron. I have a question to you guys. Because actually you said it, Munir Hassam, you said it, I said it. We as a man, we always believe that our women expect that we we buy or rent the best what's on the market is it really what they want this luxury stuff no. so everybody can see is this really no i've never it, had or, a or, or, do, or do we think it is no i think that's a different you know, most, most women are happy with the house that with you um, in my experience you know when i have shared houses it's a uh, it's never what's the biggest we can. It's like what shit. What can we afford? <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah, the best the yes. best you can with the bare minimum that you've got. Do you know what I mean? And that's where a home starts. If you could start together on something smaller, you know, you rent together. In the UK, you can do that. Okay, right. Let's move in together. Let's take that step. You know, they should. They say you should always live in the UK. You should always live with somebody first before you decide to marry them. You know, so yeah. uh, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, sorry, unfortunately, unfortunately, here it's the opposite uh, because the the parents uh, interfere a lot in uh, marriage and uh, they demand uh, a big house and a prestigious one and an expensive one in order to for them to give you their dots as if wow. they're giving you the queen or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, and sometimes, and, and not only that, yeah, Hazem, it's a, it's a near her sisters or her mom and so on. So don't go far. You know, you need to be within yeah. the neighborhood of, uh, of those areas. But let right. me, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say something okay. as well. But this, is, this can be the parents and this can be this, but, uh, you know, the old um, um, style or something like that. But I would definitely avoid, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, Big Scott. He, I mean, two things. Uh, I was in, uh, with my ex-wife in, uh, in, Rather fair apartment, two bedrooms, um, good uh, dining room, good living room, and so on. And that was it. And when we moved to the big house, I mean, it was, I remember the first few days, it was, you know, hilarious. Although that we have bought the house two years back. And we were going, visiting the compound every week and uh, eating there and so on. But once we started to move, um, it was, uh, uh, she was, you know, devastated. She... Uh, she felt bad. She was crying, and and so on. And I believe that it was it was part of the dilemma that I put myself in, because I I wanted to provide this. Um, she was scared uh, from the pool on the kids because we had at that point of time um, a one year old child. She was really yeah, scared yeah. that he can you know, fall down or fall something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. And then the stairs, because it was three floors. So it was, you know, going on the stairs. She was always that. And now, uh, now I understand because she did not really want that. That was my dream. Yeah. And, and, and now when I'm, when I'm thinking of, um, of my wife now, she does not want to have something that will, uh, make us as men uh, burdened, uh, feel away, stay away, wake up at night, try to work, work, work to provide. They just want to have us. And this is what makes them feel safe. Yeah. Not the money, not the house, but you are there. You're available. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's important. But my experience was, I don't know, guys, maybe uh, it's 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 up to me. It's my pattern. But I always met women. And normally, you know, when you meet somebody, you go out for dinner or have a coffee or whatever. 
And I always have this conversation about what are you dreaming of? Uh, it's more the material world. It's more the spiritual world. Stuff like that. And they always told me, no, material stuff is not important. No, it's not yeah. me. It's not, it's not that. And when they came to my home and they always say, you know, this luxury apartment or this, 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 this huge thinker, everything was forgotten. Then nothing was good enough again. Why four star hotel? There's a five star hotel. And, and, and it's always like this. I don't know. It's just a, it's 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 a, it's a me. It's a pattern of mine. We choose the same one, but it always was the same. In the beginning, of the conversation. No, it's not important. It's not important. Then once they see the house and they move in, never back to a smaller one. Never, never. It's like some guys. You know, once you you drive a V eight, you know, machine. You never want to have something else. And, and the same is to some women. When once they move in in a large, beautiful place, they don't want to go back to a smaller one. And I remember, I, as some guys know me, um, I, I, I wanted to get rid of this huge house in Mallorca already two years ago. I had a depression. I couldn't see all the stuff. But it was a beautiful house. No way. I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. You know? It was an amazing place. No, no way. But the last two years, I really had a depression. I want to get rid of it. Moving into my motorhome earlier, but I, I kept it because my girlfriend said, no, she loves the house. She loves the house. She loves the house. It was hell expensive. <laughs> it was a hell of work, but I kept it just for her. And I was so happy when she said, Roland, I don't have any time anymore to come to America. I said, oh, I can get rid of it and I move in a motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't like it anymore. I mean, I mean, definitely when we are talking about humans, there is, I mean, it's not everyone. It's not 100%, no. you know, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and some of the, uh, uh, of the ladies definitely would love to see a big house and a big uh, fancy uh, uh, jewelries and a big fancy car. They would not say no for that. Of course, no. this is something of the indulgement. However, how important it is we as men give it much more attention rather than what is really uh, is. And sometimes you raise the standards. And that's, that's uh, when you raise the standards, they start seeing this as the norm. So don't get me below the norm. Mm. So when and 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 again, that's the men mistake because when when I um, get two drivers to support us, you know, driving and uh, along the city, that's my thing, you know. It's uh, and then if you want to get rid of one, then how are we going to be living? Because this is the standard now, two mates. This is the standard mm. now, and 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 so mm. on. And that's that starts to uh, to get them this kind of you know um, because you showed her that stand. That's why my my brother, younger brother, is always you know making sure that okay, if I can afford a one hundred dollar uh, meal, I will not go with that. I will go with seventy <laughs> because if I raise the to the one hundred. You know, this is the standard now. It's exactly like what we are doing. You know, the example about the room service and the fruit basket. You know, if I get yeah. the fruit basket and then someone one day I don't find it in the room, then I will go complain. But I know that it's free and I know it's complimentary, but I would yeah. definitely complain. That's how it goes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But think about it. It was just me raising the, raising the standard. And then it was just normal. It was just normal. And if you couldn't keep it or you didn't want to keep it anymore, because I'm not attached to things, you know, I love yeah. to enjoy it, whatever it is. I love to enjoy it, but I'm absolutely not attached, attached to anything. Yeah, I can enjoy it, but I can also let it go. And, but but sometimes it's for the partner, it's really difficult. But, you know, you, you, you raise the standard, you have this and this, and then it's going to be cut down. Is it why? Is it because I don't want it to work? Yeah, but I want to stay. <laughs> so what you do is you just do those li luxuries on birthdays and anniversaries and make it special. <laughs> well, well, I, yes. I, I did, I did this mistake too, you know. And then I, I just, I only bought uh, an expensive perfume, and I said, yeah, I, I was expecting a, a drone or something else, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's a different topic. Uh, but so we we all come across a uh, gentleman. Creating a home for our loved ones to love, it's not about size, it's not about luxury, it's about what we make out of it. So being present, being sharing caring, time, being sharing there when the time. Yeah. yeah, 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 and being engaged and, and being supportive also in the household and stuff like that. That's that's all about it. Okay. You could you can live in a tent or you can live in a mansion. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's it, it's the family unit and it needs okay. to know that it's got its pride to to be there when it falls upon, but also 
let them be free as well. So, and a home is a nice thing to come home to, as you say, if you haven't Absolutely. seen your parents, if you're lucky enough to have parents alive, you know, there's nothing better than going home at Christmas time or whatever. And you open the door and it's like, yes, I'm home, you know, yeah. and you yeah. can't put your finger on that. You know? Absolutely. So gentlemen, whoever's looking or observing us on, on a TV station, on a social media, or just listeners on a radio station or broadcast, first of all, a home is something where you feel comfortable. It's not about size. It's not about money. So don't feel pressure, you know, be supportive to your beloved ones or make a cozy home. Doesn't mean you need a lot of money. So it puts the pressure off. And the most important thing, what I learned is don't raise the standard too high. It's difficult to climb the stairways back. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks a lot for your time and energy. We already a quarter to the hour. Thanks a lot. See you Thank next you. Wednesday. And all the best. And bye bye. Bye, gentlemen. Thank Cheers. You. Bye, bye bye. Take care. Bye.